the greatest heroic last stand in history, the Battle for Hill 3234. The Battle for Hill 3234 was a military engagement that took place in the early stages of the Soviet-Afghan War. It occurred on January 7-8, 1988, when a group of Soviet airborne troops, numbering 39 soldiers, defended a remote hilltop against a force of over 200 Mujahideen fighters. Despite being heavily outnumbered and outgunned, the Soviet troops managed to hold their ground and repel the enemy assault. The battle occurred in the Pak district of Afghanistan's Kunar province, near the border with Pakistan. The topography of the area is rugged, mountainous, and heavily forested, with steep ridges and narrow valleys. The location of Hill 3234 was a strategic point overlooking a key supply route used by the Mujahideen fighters. The hill had an elevation of 3,234 meters, 10,610 feet, which gave the occupying force a clear view of the surrounding terrain. The Soviet army had occupied the hill and established a fortified position that included trenches, bunkers, and barbed wire fences. The Mujahideen, who were heavily armed and supported by the Pakistani government, sought to dislodge the Soviet army from the hill and disrupt their supply route. The Soviet-Afghan War was a conflict that lasted from 1979 to 1989, during which the Soviet Union intervened in Afghanistan to support the Marxist government against the Mujahideen insurgents. The Soviet Army, which was the world's largest at the time, deployed over 100,000 troops to Afghanistan to support the communist government. However, the Mujahideen fighters were heavily armed and supported by the United States, Pakistan, and other countries which made it difficult for the Soviet army to gain control of the country. The war was a significant drain on Soviet resources, with the USSR losing over 14,000 troops and spending billions of rubles on military operations in Afghanistan. By the mid-1980s, the Soviet Union was seeking a way out of the conflict, but the Mujahideen were still putting up fierce resistance. Background of the battle in November 1987, the Soviet 40th Army under General Boris Gromov began Operation Magistral to open the road from Gardez to coast near the Pakistani border. Coast had been cut off for months by a Mujahideen led by Jalaluddin Haqqani and had to be resupplied by air. Negotiations were undertaken with the local Jadran tribe as well as with Haqqani. These talks did not succeed mostly due to the unshakable resolution of Haqqani who wanted to control the city as the core of his independent Afghan state and as a base for future incursions deeper into the country. Before the operation, there was also a widespread propaganda campaign, with a special radio station set up, calling on the Jadran people to cease supporting the Mujahideen and leave the combat areas. Even during the negotiations, a detailed operation plan was formed and the required forces put on alert. After talks finally collapsed, the offensive was set in motion. The operation involved the 108th and 201st Motor Rifle Divisions, as well as the 103rd Guards Airborne Division, the 345th Independent Guards Airborne Regiment, and the 56th Separate Air Assault Brigade. In late December 1987, a group of Soviet airborne troops from the 345th Independent Guards Airborne Regiment was deployed to the Salong Pass area in northeastern Afghanistan. Their mission was to secure a section of the Kabul Termez Highway, which was a vital supply route for Soviet forces in Afghanistan. The area was heavily contested, with Mujahideen fighters frequently attacking Soviet convoys and installations. Soviet commanders wanted to secure the entire section of the road from Gardez to coast. One of the most important points was the nameless hill designated by its height of 10,610 feet, which was assigned to the 9th Company of the 345th Independent Guards Airborne Regiment led by Colonel Valery Vostrotin. On January 7, 1988, the Soviet troops received intelligence that a large Mujahideen force was planning to attack their position on Hill 3234, which was located near the highway. The hill was a strategic location that provided a clear view of the surrounding area, and its capture would have given the Mujahideen a significant advantage. The 39-man company landed on the hilltop on January 7, 1988 tasked with creating and holding a hilltop strong point from which to observe and control a long section of the road beneath and thus secured for the safe passage of convoys. Shortly after landing, 
the airborne troopers, who were well trained and experienced in Afghan conditions, started to take up positions which covered both the road and the uphill passages. Just as they had dug in, the Mujahideen began their attack at 3.30 p.m. local time. The first wave included the use of recoilless guns and RPGs. After which, Soviet artillery replied, directed by the commander of the 1st platoon, Lt. Viktor Gagarin, via radio. When rebel fire decreased, it was reasoned that it was the beginning of an infantry assault. The airborne troopers were attacked by a coordinated and well-armed force of between 200 and 250 Mujahideen from two directions, indicating that the assailants may have been assisted by rebels trained in Pakistan. The Soviet troops, under the command of Lt. Col. Valery Vostratin, immediately began preparing their defenses. They dug trenches and bunkers, set up machine gun positions, and laid mines around the perimeter. They also called for reinforcements, but due to the remote location, it would take several hours for them to arrive. The Mujahideen attack began in the early Ho. The Soviet troops responded with heavy machine gun fire and artillery, but the Mujahideen continued to advance. The Mujahideen fighters were well equipped, with modern weapons supplied by the United States and other Western countries. The Soviet troops fought bravely, but they were quickly running low on ammunition and supplies. The situation was made worse by the extreme cold, with temperatures dropping to below minus 30 degrees Celsius, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The Soviet troops had to use their own bodies to cover the artillery shells to prevent them from freezing, and their water supply had frozen solid. Despite the odds against them, the Soviet troops held their ground and continued to repel the enemy assault. They called for air support, and Soviet helicopters arrived to provide covering fire. The helicopters also evacuated the wounded and brought in supplies and reinforcements. As the battle raged on, the Mujahideen fighters became increasingly desperate. They launched wave after wave of attacks, but each time they were driven back by the Soviet troops. The Soviet soldiers used everything at their disposal, including bayonets and hand-to-hand -hand combat, to hold off the enemy. Finally, after more than 12 hours of fighting, the Mujahideen retreated. They left behind dozens of dead and wounded fighters, along with a significant amount of weapons and equipment. The Soviet troops had suffered six fatalities and 28 wounded, but they had held their ground and repelled the enemy assault. The Soviet forces lost six men out of 39. The vast majority of the unit became casualties, with 28 of the remaining 33 being wounded in action. Two of the soldiers killed, Vyacheslav Alexandrovich Alexandrov and Andrei Alexandrovich Melnyakov, were posthumously awarded the Golden Star of the Hero of the Soviet Union. All of the paratroopers in this battle were given the Order of the Red Banner and Order of the Red Star. According to the Soviet estimates, the Mujahideen lost over 200 men. The Mujahideen wore black uniforms with rectangular black-yellow-red stripes. It was alleged by several sources that there were some mercenaries from Pakistan who were coordinating the attack. The Battle for Hill 3234 was a significant victory for the Soviet Union. It demonstrated the courage and determination 